In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a separate output of emails for each line of an Excel dataset using Excel VBA. So you've got the Excel dataset here, and I've got the macro set up. And when I run the macro, you're going to get a different Outlook email for each line of Excel dataset. And what's good about this, it picks up all the information from the Excel dataset in terms of you've got the two for the primary email, and then you've got the circular email. And in this case, we've got two circular emails. You've got a subject line, and we've got two attachments. One's a word attachment, another one is a PDF, and then you've got the body of the email. That's all picked up from Excel. And in addition, we've also got each email has its importance, its priority. So in this case, I've set the from the Excel data set the priority for this email as high importance, and the one below it, the importance has been set for the priority low. Next, I'm going to show how it's all done. Okay, so let's have a closer look at the Excel data set that we're going to be using to generate the Outlook email. So for column A, we've got the first name, and then for column B, we've got the full name, and then for column C, we've got the email address, that's the primary email address. That's going to be appearing in the two line of the Outlook email. And then for column D, we've got the circular email address, it's going to be appearing in the TC part of the Outlook email. Then you've got the subject, then you've got the email body text. Now for this, what I've done, I'm referencing a cell in another sheet, and that sheet is called email body text. So I click on email body text, and the, the reference cell is B2, which is fixed. So I'll click on that, you'll see cell B2 has been expanded. The width of the row and the width of the column has been expanded, and then you can enter the text in here. And if I expand the formula bar at the top here, you can enter the text in there. Now be careful uh, when you enter the text here. If you press return, it'll come out of cell B2 and go to cell B3, uh, cell below. So if you want to add a new uh, line in this cell, what we do is you press Alt, Enter, and that introduces a new line. If I press New Line, create a new line. And if you want to add another new line, you again press Alt, Enter, and you get a new line here. So that's how we put in text in a formula bar. So I'll just undo that and reduce the row with the formula bar and go back to the main email that you set. So yeah, you can enter anything you want there and that's going to be referencing cell in column F and the, the VBA macro will pick up the text. And then for column G, we've got the priority. That's the drop down. We've got low priority, normal priority and high priority. That's going to be created using a data validation list. And to do that, we go into the, the data tab in the ribbon, then we go into data validation, then data validation, then in the data validation dialog box in the settings tab, in the allow, you click on the option for list, then we can type in values you want to the drop down. So in this case, I put in low priority, normal priority, and high priority. And for each uh, value in the drop down um, text, you need to separate it by a comma and you can carry on putting it but in this case we just need the three options okay there and then as you can see you've got the drop downs for low priority normal priority and high priority now as you can see i've set different priorities for each excel line and uh, the excel vba mac will pick it up and change the priority in terms of the importance on the outlook email which you'll see later and then for column eight you've got the full path of the first attachment and then you've got the full path of the second attachment. First one is a Word document and the second one is a PDF document. And then lastly we've got the email sent date. Now that's not something that you put in yourself. The VBA macro once it successfully generates an Outlook email for each line and sends it out, it puts a date stamp um, in this cell feature when it does the VBA macro loop. Okay so let's go through the Excel VBA macro that I've created that's going to create a Outlook email for each line of this Excel dataset via a loop. So this uses something called late binding. With late binding, the Outlook object, application object, is going to be created during runtime. Doing it this way, you don't need to go into tools in and then you don't need to go into references. And in the references, you don't need to check the library for Outlook objects. And by doing it this way, when you share the 
this uh, Excel workbook, then you don't have to worry about the, the user, the recipient, um, having checked the library for Outlook because everything's going to be done within the code. So the first thing is let's declare the variables. The first variable is the Outlook app. That's going to be of type object. And then the Outlook email is going to be based on the Outlook app object. Then you've got string body text that's going to be used to house the full body of the email text. Then you've got the worksheet WSHC that's going to be the worksheet containing the Excel data used for each Outlook email. Then these are last variables of type integer. Integer last row is going to be used to work out the last row of the data set. So in this case, it's going to be row 9. And then integer row, that's going to be used as a looping variable. So the first object, uh, first variable outlook app, we're going to use something called a create object uh, function. And we're going to use outlook the application. That's going to be the outlook application object. And that's going to be created and then assigned to the outlook app. Then we'll come to that later. Next, we're going to assign the worksheet object. Uh, so for WSHT, we're going to assign the Excel data sheet containing the, the Excel data for each Outlook email. That's this sheet here, and it's called bulk email. You can also use the code name if you want to. So for example, if the code name for this uh, bulk email worksheet was sheet one, then without rather than put this workbook of sheets you just put equals sheet one so next thing we do is we work out the last row of the bulk email sheet that's this uh, line here and then this line here what it does is um for column j it clears the the email sent the last time everything was sent uh, via the bpa macro so that clears the information for new emails to be sent and then the next part is you start a bulk email loop from the second row of the data set so the looping variable is integer row and it's going to start from row two and it's going to go to the last row of the data set then the next part here you're going to compose the email body text on the worksheet cell information and the first part of that is it's going to uh, say or it's going to create dear and then it's going to append dear to the first name it's going to be obtained from this column here two new lines are going to be added and the rest of the body text is going to be obtained from the information uh, which is referenced in a cell in column f relating to the information that we saw earlier in cell b2 for in email body text so once the information is all being set up, then what we do next is we create a new instance of an Outlook email. So we use the Outlook app, and then um, we use this line of code here, and we apply and we assign it to the Outlook mail object so to create a new instance of an Outlook email. And then each Outlook email object created uh, has properties, and we can take advantage. So one of them is dot two. And then what we do for that is we assign the for the looping row uh, we assign the primary email address in column C. Then the dot cc that's going to be in column D. Now if you wanted to add more than one dot cc, you need to uh, just separate out with a this semicolon here. Uh, in my case, we don't have a second cc. So what I've done is just to illustrate the concept. I've used the same cc circular column d email address twice and then next thing we do is we assign the, the subject information here in the, the subject property here and the body property is then assigned to using the string body text which we populated earlier next we add the attachments for the attachments property there's a method called dot add and then we put the full path of the attachment that we want to attach the, to the out email and the two and the two paths are in column h and column i this is going to be for column h is a word document and column i is a pdf document now if you wanted to add a third attachment 
all you need to do is just carry on adding attachments. So for a third one, you put dot attachments again, dot add, then you put the uh, information relating to uh, the full path for the third attachment. So those are you could have, you can set up a third column here, and then put the attachment the third um, full path, and then assign that to uh, using dot attachment to the Outlook email. Next, what we do here is uh, we set the email priority, and that's going to be determined uh, from the worksheet cell value during the loop. So as we saw earlier, we've got three types of values, low priority, normal priority, and high priority for each row of the data set. And what the loop does is it looks at, for column G, what the uh, for the current looping row, what the value is. So if it's, say, low priority, then in terms of the priority, it's not called priority as a property, it's called dot importance. So if the, what I've done is, so if the value is low priority, then that is equivalent to the importance um, property being zero. If it's normal priority, then it's one. And if it's high priority, it's two. And so this line here, dot send, and because I'm just going to show you how each instance of the Outlook email looks, I'm not going to send it, uh, just for displaying. But if you want to send it, then you disable this line, uh, sorry, you enable this line, and then you send it, so it'll automatically send the email after each Outlook email is created in the loop, it sends it automatically. And then the last thing is, uh, well, nearly the last thing, it displays email here. And um, when each Outlook email is created for each looping row, a date stamp is added in column J. And then the loop then restarts for the next row. Uh, but before it does that, it reassigns, um, it sets the, the string body text variable to nothing uh, as, an empty, as an empty string in readiness for the next piece of information for the next looping row. And then the last part is it sets the Outlook objects to nothing to save um, memory. Now that the Excel data set and the VP macro has been created, let's run it and see in action. In this case, we've got three Excel lines and we want to create three separate Outlook emails. We've got all three kinds of priority, normal, low and high. We shall see that. And then what we do is we go into the developer tab and then we click on macros on the left and it shows you all the list of all your VBA macros. In this case, we've only got one and just run it. So the VBA macro is going through a loop and examining each row of the Excel dataset, gathering information and then composing the email. The very last email is related to name three. And you can see the name three email, prime email here. You've got two circular email addresses, which you've used twice in this case. You've got the subject line, from the information from the column performance report. You've got two attachments, one's a word attachment and one's a PDF. Then you've got finally the body text, and that's name three, again used uh, for the body text up here. And then you've also got the priority and in this case the priority is set as high and then that's been set as high importance and the outlook email that's in the middle of the excel data set exactly same before this time we got name two uh, in this case we've got the priority set as low and the first email address same form as before and in this case we don't see a priority here um, the reason why is for normal priority, that's the default priority, so you don't need to check high importance or low importance, so that's why you don't see it there. And then what you have, the last thing that happens is an email sent, um, date stamp is added for each line for the Excel data set. That's it. Thanks for watching and watch out for my next video.